Today we're going to be recharging the air conditioning the right way on this 2009 Jetta. What you're going to need, manifold gauges. These are cheapos from Harbor Freight, but they'll do just fine for today. In my case, I'm just going to put a new valve in my air, air conditioning compressor because I have a German car that these tend to fail frequently. I'm going to need a couple cans. I couldn't find a large enough can at the store, so I need a couple cans of 134A. This car takes 18 and a half ounces. Depending on your vehicle, right here, it'll tell you exactly the type of refrigerant and how much you need. Might also be located down here on the car. You'll also need one of these little vacuum pumps. You can actually rent these from AutoZone or O'Reilly Auto Parts. You spend, you know, you swipe your credit card, they'll let you have it for 48 hours and then you just take it back when you're done and it's free. Make sure the vacuum pump has at least, I think, 1.2 CFM. This is 1.8, so it'll be good to go for this small little AC job. It's also good to have a little thermometer to throw into your vents. You probably want some goggles and gloves. And another nice thing to have is this food scale. Now my, my compressor is actually located down there, and I verified that it is spinning. It's not making a ton of angry noises. So really what I'm going to do is put the new valve in the compressor. Some people might actually put in a new compressor uh, and that might be my next step. We're just gonna see if this valve works. It's the cheap way to do it. Another nice piece of wisdom here for you. I've actually recharged this car once before. This time I'm gonna replace this Schrader valve and this Schrader valve in here. These are European, so they're larger. They're big bore valves. We're gonna see if these end up working in this tool. I tried my regular Schrader and realized that those are much larger. So here we go, we're gonna replace those valves. So you get this tool, put it in here, and hopefully it'll just spin right out, ha ha. Did it work? Hey, I think it worked. So what I ended up doing is I actually used a 15 millimeter socket, which didn't fit perfectly over this little tool, but I needed some leverage. These things are really stuck. And there's one. I don't know if we can see that, but it is uh, torn a little bit. Imagining that little tear where the problem is coming in. And if I look at this, this is a big bore Schrader from Napa, and this is the one off the car, so I am going to probably need to go get another set. This the thread is on the bottom, thread's on the top. I don't think that's going to work, so back to the store I go. Okay, back from the store, and if you have a European car, Volkswagen, Audi, these this little cap and valve kit from O'Reilly will actually work. It's got the exact little purple ringed uh, European big bore Schrader valves that you need. Uh, this was about, I think, $15 at O'Reilly. Um, they also have the smaller Schrader kits for about, I don't know, five to $10. So not too expensive to replace these Schraders. And when you're putting these Schrader valves in, uh, you want to just kind of drop them in there, and we're not going to go super tight on these. We're just going to snug them up because those little those little pieces of rubber are not super durable. So we'll just get it snug and stop. So just like snug it up, and then just give it a little tiny, just a little pinch after that, and that should be good. Do that with both valves. So the first thing we're going to do is. Pull a vacuum on the system, and as you can see here, the red valve is much larger than the blue. These are just a compression style fitting. You pull them back to put them on. Make sure this is, make sure this is backed out all the way. You do counterclockwise to close it, and then when we want to open the Schrader valve, we screw this down. And don't screw them down too far. They could damage your valves. So we're going to pop this on first and then verify that it's locked in place. Pop the red one on as well.
We've got the gauge hooked up. These are both closed. We're gonna come down here to this little Schrader valve and we're gonna just turn it in real slowly until that moves a little bit. And since this system is all evacuated, I'm probably not gonna get much, if any, movement. There's a little bit there. Same thing with this. You don't wanna go in all the way. You just wanna go in a little bit to where once you can determine that it's moving that, there we go. Okay, so now both of those are in and they're not, they're not fully depressed. Now we can start to pull a vacuum on the system. So we're going to use this yellow, hook it up to our vacuum pump. And the first thing we're gonna do before we actually load this thing up with new Freon, we're gonna do a vacuum test and, and let it sit for maybe 20 minutes, 30 minutes at the most, and just make sure that we're not losing vacuum. We wanna make sure that we don't have a leak somewhere. So we've got low pressure, high pressure hooked up here. And we've got this yellow hooked up to this vacuum pump. Your vacuum pump will vary. You might need to use this other little adapter, but this one fits mine. And once again, these are the same way. You wanna go ahead and just snug these up. They are a little rubber fitting, so you don't wanna damage your, your rubber fitting in there. We'll go ahead and turn this on. It'll make terrible sounds. And then to pull a vacuum on this system, now that we've got the new valves in, we're gonna open these up all the way. That one started to pull a vacuum and we'll open this up. And we got a vacuum pulling on that as well. Now I'm at high elevation, so this should get to about probably 21, 22. And this one will just probably stay right around there. I'm at about 5,000 feet, so that's what I expect is 21 to 22 on there. If you're at sea level, you'll probably see 27, 28. So I want to close these all the way, and we'll see where they are. And we're going to shut this pump off, and we're going to come back here in about 20 minutes, something like that, 30 minutes maybe, to see, just to make sure this is holding, and I want to make sure that it's not, not leaking. This is a common source of leakage. So when you do a vacuum test, we've done the vacuum test and the whole system tests out and everything seems fine. The vacuum, you know, you don't lose vacuum over 20, 30 minutes. Uh, you could still have bad valves and they're like a $5 replacement. So before you recharge, you might as well stick some new Schrader valves in there and, and just, uh, just for insurance. Now the vacuum's about where we need it to be. So we are gonna let this run for about 30 minutes. And then we'll come back and turn the vacuum pump off and uh, do a quick leak test. This car calls for 525 grams, which is 18 and a half ounces. These cans are 12 ounces. So what we're gonna have to do is put in a full 12 ounce can. Then we're gonna have to grab our second can and we're gonna have to run it much slower. We'll probably close this down and then open it up very slow and we'll set this on the scale. And what we're gonna do is pull this off when there's 9.1 ounces left in this can. The reason, the reason is if you want to do some quick math on this, you can set these on here, figure out how much they weigh. This one's about 15.5, the other one's 15.4. So once this gets down to 9.1 ounces, then we'll know we have exactly 18 and a half ounces in this system and we can stop. We can just close this down once we get to that point. Now, if you replaced anything else in your AC system um, or your compressor down there, just make sure that you don't need to add oil. Most new compressors, if you get a brand new compressor, they come with oil. If you've replaced anything else in your system, you might need to get some sort of an oil charge. You'll have to check your manual and determine how much oil you need. And if you want to add oil to the system, I'm just gonna add it through this yellow line. Same, same way we're gonna add the refrigerant. You'll just pop that on to the oil can and add the necessary amount of oil. Okay, it's been 30 minutes. And that's long enough for me. Some people go a little longer. You can choose yourself. 
I've got a nice vacuum on that. That's maximum I'm gonna get at 5,000 feet elevation. So next step, before we turn the vacuum pump off, we're gonna close these up. We wanna make sure we have a good vacuum pulled, you know, between these valves and the AC system before we shut that vacuum pump off. This bugger off, pull this off of the vacuum pump, and we're gonna get ready to charge. The next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna take our can, use this little adapter. It's gonna puncture into the top. You'll notice these cans, these newer ones have a little red dot in there. They actually reseal, so it's not just puncturing a top, it has a seal inside. You wanna make sure this is backed all the way out. There's a little valve in here. You don't want it all the way down when you put this in. So we're gonna back it all the way out and install this on the can. Now, we're gonna put our yellow hose on this end of the can. So we're gonna open that up. Now that we've got that can of refrigerant hooked up, we're gonna take a screwdriver and you should see the refrigerant come out of this. Of course, you wanna steer clear of it when you push it down, just purging the air out of it. That's all we're doing. And actually, you probably wanna wear gloves as well. There we go. Okay, now that we've got the air purged out of this line, you wanna make sure everything's clear here, that you don't have any of these cables going down and touching any of the fans. Now we're gonna head on into the car. And once we get ready to charge this, we're only going to open up the low pressure side to charge the system. So we're gonna start the car. Make sure you have a well ventilated area. We're gonna, we're gonna stick this thermometer in here. It'll work for what we want to do. Make sure you got your parking brake on and you're gonna wanna hit your AC button. You can turn it to like one or two on here. Make sure the AC's on and we're sitting at about 81 degrees. So now we're gonna come back to the car And we are going to slowly open this valve and let it start drawing in. And you can see here the refrigerant going in. And we'll hear that, hear that kick in. It's hard to hear on this car. They're pretty, pretty quiet, but you can see it, you can see it going up. Low pressure sides going up, high pressure is following. Then another trick you can do is you can hold these cans upside down once they get to the end and make sure that all the refrigerant gets out. Well, we're starting to make a little bit of progress. It's turning on and cycling. The low pressure is a little high. This is up to 100, this is about 60. So uh, it's cycling through, but we're almost through this, this first can. So we're gonna shake it a little bit and then we're gonna Close this, close this up, put the second can on, weigh it, and then we're gonna let as much Freon out of that as, as we can to get down to, uh, I believe it was six and a half ounces that we need out of the second can. So we're gonna see what the weight is to start out and count six and a half ounces down from there. Okay, this can feels about empty. So what we're gonna do is close, we're gonna close this Low pressure side, high pressure has been closed the entire time. Now we're gonna install our new can. So we're gonna set this on here. There we go. Lines purged. So we're gonna open this up really slowly because I don't wanna put more than six and a half ounces in there. So I gotta, I gotta really watch the scale. I'm gonna go slow. And you can see in the sight glass when it's going in, so.
Okay, we've got this weighed out and charged where I think it should be. I'm gonna have to go look at uh, some temperature gauges, but we're at about, oh, well, between 20 and 30 on the low pressure side and a little above 100 there. And that is the maximum amount of refrigerant we should have in this car, unless I wasted some. And if you come in here and look, this is the first time looking at this. Oh boy, that looks great. We're sitting at about 44 degrees. So looking good. I think we're going to go ahead and turn this off and I'll show you how to disconnect everything. Okay, now we're just going to back these off and make sure both of these are backed out and then just pop the connectors off. You have a little bit of pressure in there, which is normal. And that's good. Now we're gonna put these caps back on. Whew, that is it. A uh, couple extra trips to the store due to that European Trader valve, but I'm gonna go ahead and remove these gauges. I'm gonna double check one more time, maybe take it for a test drive. See if I can keep that air blowing consistently. I wanna run it for five to 10 minutes just to make sure that the air is cycling properly and it's always at that nice, you know, 40 some degrees. Right now it's not very hot outside. So um, these, these Volkswagens, they're known for not producing the coldest air conditioning and they're also known for uh, repeat work. So let's hope this did the trick. Uh, hopefully this helped you out. Uh, let me know in the comments if I missed anything that you can think of and I'll try to pin the comment. Hope this helps you out to do a proper job, get all the moisture out of your system, and uh, yeah, good luck.